Thanks, everyone. Thanks so much. Wow, what an afternoon. I am kind of filled to the brim with different information. There's so much wisdom here in the room and so many interesting things that have been discussed today. We did want to have an opportunity before we close off the day completely and we all go off to water ourselves at Havana um, to share a little bit of what happened just during those open space sessions. So um, we'll invite um, some of our scribes to share some of the key insights and questions that came from those different sessions, but uh, also there's an opportunity for you as attendees to share some of the key things and key questions that you brought out of it. Equally, I'd invite you, um, as we're kind of coming into the final stretch of the day, to um, use, if, if you wanted to log back into Slido, there's an opportunity, I guess, beyond this event, uh, looking at where, where do we take this next, and what are the opportunities for us to take this energy and these connections that we've forged to really forward and progress the movement of co-housing within Aotearoa. And I think that we've got a whole lot of insight and wisdom and skill and also a whole lot of things that we've all done individually um, and aren't really totally aware that um, you know, have been done that we, we can save other people the effort and the energy of doing um, you know, by, by sharing it in a, a powerful way. And I think there's some really interesting conversations that came out of today around the incorporated society and what that can do in terms of advocacy and also sharing that information. And I'm really keen on seeing how we can keep that energy going and make sure that we've got a collective voice that we can work with. So um, before we do that, I'd like to invite some of the scribes uh, from the different sessions to, to come down and share. I'm just wondering, um, it might be good to start with potentially some scribes or note takers that were there at the Incorporated Society session. Uh, if there were some key insights and observations, outcomes from that. Was anyone there taking notes either in a professional scribe capacity or? Nat, you were. Hey. Nat's not in the room. There's quite a lot of people still chatting outside. Still chatting outside. Should we go, can, can we have somebody to hustle them in, possibly? <laughs> that could be quite useful. Okay, and all of them are talking with each other outside. <laughs> that sounds about right. Yeah. That sounds about right. Well, maybe skipping over that, um, was there, there was also a session running concurrently in relation to building, uh, building and the limits, yes? Yeah, thanks, Gary. Cheers. Hi, can everyone hear me? Yes, yes. Um, so I'll just run through. Um, I structured my notes in um, key challenges, key learnings, and their next steps. I'll just do them quite quickly. Um, so the key challenges, material costs, the regional variation in labour and resource costs, skills shortage, a lack of competition, the high startup costs in, pre in the pre-building space. Uh, we also talked about the difficulty consenting four to six storey builds. Uh, difficulty purchasing well-located land. And a big one near the end was the difficulty in breaking the cost barrier to make builds affordable um, and the concern that we would end up building communities for empty nesters. Um, so starting with the challenges is perhaps a bit negative. Um, <laughs> moving on to key learnings. Um, I've got two here. Key learning one is to introduce builders at an early stage of design. Um, and the second one was uh, you can include students from educational facilities in the builds and in self-builds, although if you do this, although it may lower the cost, it also introduces complexity and risk. Um, for next steps, we talked about increasing the scale of production and output and forming an umbrella group that can bring co-housing projects together and people working on them, represent their needs and potentially assist with scale of purchasing, building materials, etc. Um, support from the government, educating the public on co-housing and looking at providing ha land for co-housing. We talked about exploring equity models and finally we talked a little bit about the possibility of updating council rules to better support co-housing, for example by removing the need for car parks. So that's the list that I've got. Awesome, thank you very much, that was great. Um, was there anyone from Robin Ellison's session who wanted to share? Share some of what came out of that, or some insights from that. 
Not all at once. <laughs> oh yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. I'll give you a microphone. Um, so the kind of key points uh, I think we got from Robin's talk was that it's important within the co-housing community that everyone has uh, shared visions and the idea uh, that um, decisions that are made are for the best interest of the whole. Um, so uh, that all of the members of the co-housing, um, especially in... Um, Sorry, I'm just getting through my notes. Especially in Earth Song, is that they all understand the procedures that um, they have to go through to uh, make these decisions, um, and they use the cards, so the colours of empowerment, um, as a tool to help kind of facilitate how everyone's feeling about certain decisions that they're making. So. Um, these cards range from a whole bunch of different kind of colours, um, from black saying that they have a difficulty with the discussion or the consensus and they just don't want to participate, um, or that uh, they have um, a disagreement or whether they have a question or they agree or they're neutral about it. And so it, it helps facilitate their conversations and decisions um, and lets everyone be heard on the same basis as everyone else. Um, and you can kind of read the room because you can see people's cards changing without having to go through the whole process of maybe hearing people saying the same thing over and over again. Um, yeah, I think that was the main main points, but I think it's just really important that everyone was, is on the same page and working towards the best interest of the whole of the community. Awesome. Thanks, Eddie. And sounds like a great, uh, great technique for some non-verbal communication. Um, in terms of maybe looping back to the Incorporated Society, do you just want to share some key insights or the key observations from that session? Um, yeah, so we had a presentation from Greer about the Society. and. One of the main things was asking ideas for a better name. So if anyone has ideas, you can send those through. Um, Is we it talked test about you can add that into Slido right now if you want to start nominating yeah. some names? So. Uh, we talked through a range of different models, but one of the key things was that there's so many different models that um, Greer's actually got a flow chart that can help you find sort of what your goals are and then what model would suit you best. So maybe she will send that through as well. Yep, um, need for transparency in the governance of the society. So I think there's um, conversations that have been, have been had around that, so that will be available as well. Um, matching up people's needs with people's skills and knowing like what needs they have and what availability people have. Um, do you want to? Oh, yeah. Um, great. So we, uh, at the end of the conversation, we really started focusing on short, medium and long-term goals because part of the um, focus was really putting together a shared mandate for how an incorporated society might become that unified voice. Um, and so uh, not wanting to get too specific because this list will be made available, but essentially the short term is about um, getting the membership going, developing an appropriate voice so that we can be an advocate that has um, presence around non-speculative development as well as ways that these models can be incorporated to create a much wider and um, more diverse industry that we have now. Um, to focus on working with banks or alternative finance partners and models to really um, you know, focus on solving some of those finance issues because that seems to be one of the biggest um, hurdles that people face. Um, alongside that, focusing on connecting with existing institutes to promote advocacy amongst um, the existing industry. Uh, and that could go hand in hand with um, also es establishing like a 101 navigating the system guide um, to help all these different players involved from architects to banks to lawyers to understand how to work with some of these groups in a much more um, collegial way. 
More medium term was um, actually developing a platform to match people's needs and skills, sharing information about projects through an open source online platform, so how-to stories as well as options of different models being packaged up and shared, um, collaborating with KiwiBuild, more about kind of lobbying and the specific groups that we could do that with, and then long term was around um, developing much more in-depth resources and handbooks, um, lobbying for long term policy change, and I guess escalating um, what the Incorporated Society could achieve in that sense, um, and also providing scholarships or support or looking for um, leveraging off existing funding opportunities to actually connect some of the fantastic young researchers um, and activists in this space so that they can also have um, a voice to kind of add to the symphony. Um, and ultimately the goal was to build a new system for delivering housing and communities in New Zealand through this, <laughs> through this process. So um, there was lots of ideas shared. I hope I did a good job of um, piecing them all together for you. Great. Sounds like a pretty rich conversation went on. And just to follow up on that, um, there will be an option in the follow up to this event to opt in um, to have your email shared with the Incorporated Society. So just a warning uh, about that. Um, I think it's a great initiative, but um, there will be that option. Awesome. Thanks heaps. Thank you. Um, in terms of the second set of sessions, maybe just quickly wrapping those up as well. Um, I know that we have another session provided by RT on tax and legal structures equally, and RT, RT Chand is a uh, tax lawyer specialist uh, and in the building. She's left. Oh, yeah. Did anyone take any notes from that session? Yes. Do you have a microphone? Or? Oh, yeah, we might switch one. Oh, yeah, let her move too, yeah. I'll just stand close enough. Um, so on the tax and legal considerations, there are a few questions um, that we talked around. What is the end goal? Um, you should structure what works from day one and make sure that your structure has longevity. Uh, think about how conflict will be managed. Uh, and think about whether the bank will be happy with the structure that you're putting together. Uh, the structures that we talked through were tenants in common, joint ventures, partnerships, limited partnerships, companies, trusts and unit titles. Uh, we also talked a little bit about the tax and GST considerations. Awesome. Thanks, Karen. And look, um, Adi's presentation, uh, along with quite a few of the others, will be available for people afterwards if you didn't manage to make it along to the session. Um, Alan, did you want to share something regarding, or did we have somebody taking notes at Alan's session on financing? We did, uh, but maybe Alan... <laughs> Alan's right in the middle. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. A very quick one, Alan. Yeah. Thanks. The, the overall summary of what I talked about was... was having certainly looked at some of the projects today is get the finance people involved at the start. Don't get it, don't, don't get part way down then realise you've now got to talk to someone. Um, going to one bank doesn't mean you're going to get the answer. So talk to someone who knows how to navigate the process. We talked a lot about some of the, lots certainly around co-owning, some of the tips and tricks there around making sure you've got an agreement. And this applies to if you're a part of a group, like the lead core group doing the initial development, some of the agreement stuff you should have to protect everybody. Uh, and then obviously what if it goes wrong? So if, um, if you're relying on incomes from people to fund the initial development or even the co-owning and someone gets hit by a bus, um, whether it's fatal or non-fatal, what happens there? So so we're talking about the financing of it um, and some of the issues there and then the agreements and how to protect yourself as well. Awesome. Great. Thanks, Alan. And last but not least, uh, maybe just somebody sharing insights from the session from OHU. Uh, either Kamea or James might be best to come directly from you if you're in the room. Or Thomas as well. Somewhere? Oh, yeah. yeah Thomas. Thomas is there? Thomas is sitting over there. Where is Thomas? I can't even <laughs> see anyone. See oh, there, there we go. Is Thomas around? Who took the notes? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where is he? <laughs> It was very eloquent, anyway. Uh, okay, um, so yeah, it was good. We talked through, Camille and James talked through a couple of more kind of uh, commercially oriented uh, collective ownership models and projects. One is Colette's Corner in Littleton and the other is uh, Madras uh, in Christchurch. I guess this is good uh, in terms of like the wider kind of framing of collective ownership. I think a lot of people have come here thinking about uh, sort of personal residential needs in terms of having accommodation, but this was slightly broader in terms of other other types of 
uh, property and, and, and land development that might be uh, collectively owned. So that was good, and then there was a sort of brief uh, space for questions and discussions. There was some stuff about uh, uh, what is the community that you're accountable to when you have a, uh, a kind of crowdsourced, uh, collectively owned building. Uh, once you start adding investors to the mix of uh, residents and people in the community, then that starts to that's a that's a different dynamic that you have to that you have to manage. Um, there's also some stuff about the the kind of underlying well, that I took away anyway, the underlying kind of financial model that we have in our society, which is essentially extractive, uh, where banks effortlessly profit from debt that they magically create uh, through strokes on the keyboard, uh, and how we might be able to move away from that by um, pooling our resources as individuals and organisations, uh, and then using that to uh, finance development in a kind of non-extractive, uh, more regenerative way. So that was good, and uh, there was lots, lots more, I'm sure, in there. It was quite a rich session, but I'll stop there. Thanks. Beautiful. Awesome. Well, look, I'm sure there was a lot more insight. There was a, uh, there are a lot more gem gems of wisdom that were shared during those sessions. Um, just wanting to reiterate once more, we will be sharing the insights, the notes that have been taken. But equally, if there are additional questions or insights that came out of those sessions, um, you do have an opportunity via Slido, maybe to capture them while they're still fresh, um, to enter those ideas or questions in there. Equally, it's an opportunity, I think, to um, indicate what you'd like to happen next. So following this event, I think that you know, we've taken this opportunity to connect with each other, and there's all of this, there's, there's all of these wonderful projects and wonderful insight in the room. How is it we make the most of this connection that we've made and really help set up a platform for other people to be able to do this more easily in the future? So um, I'll leave you with that before I hand over. I just wanted to uh, make a few thank yous, and I won't thank the speakers. I'll leave that up to, um, to, to Mark and Karen. But I wanted to say thank you, a big thank you to uh, Pomegranate Kitchen for the wonderful catering today. And there's heaps of it, um, so I'm probably going to be eating chocolate brownies for the rest of the week. Um, thank you so much to our volunteers, and I've got a list of them here. It's, this wouldn't have happened uh, without you. Um, so thanks to Karina, Carrie, Karen, Austin, Bridget, Abby, Hetty, Marcy, Gina, Candela, Simon, and Paul and Kirsten from Tauro Campus. Big thanks to you guys. <laughs> I also wanted to give a big thank you to our sponsors and supporters, um, without whom this wouldn't have been possible. So um, first and foremost, VUW, for helping make this space available for us and for helping bring over the co-housing inclusive exhibition. Um, it's an awesome exhibition, and I make sure if you haven't had a chance to look at it today that you do. Um, equally, it's going to be open for the rest of the week. So if you have other people who are interested in this work, um, point them in that direction. Um, big thank you to Parsonson Architects um, for, for helping make this happen and sponsoring some of our gifts to speakers. Um, big thank you to Ducks um, for, for their sponsorship, Wellington City Council, um, the, I'll make sure I say this right, it's not MHUD or maybe it is, the Ministry of Housing and Urban Development um, and thank you to Inspiral. Um, and with that I'll hand over to, to Michael. Thanks everyone. Might be Mark. Oh, Mark. Yeah, Mark. <laughs> Not Michael. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're we're all um, uh, uh, getting to the stage that we uh, need that drink. I think, Damien. Um, there's not much we want to add except some heartfelt uh, thanks. Uh, firstly, to to all of you. The idea was about an exchange, and uh, that's certainly uh, that's uh, certainly happened. Um, uh, I think our international speaker and uh, having him uh, revisit us again in a few months' time will actually be uh, uh, a really helpful thing. Uh, something I want to put out there for the incorporated society uh, that I, I notice didn't quite um, emerge from uh, the discussion, uh, is, uh, but it's evident in what Michael does. Uh, the experiment days, right? 
Uh, we have uh, Brad here from Hamilton that ran a kind of a local version of that um, uh, uh, at the end of last year. And there was 250 people turned up. Like, actually, the grassroots interest in this is really huge. So I, I, I think um, if there's a theme for me that comes out, you know, uh, we had uh, the cult, the doubt of the neighbours, right? And I do know there's huge misconceptions about the uh, about what uh, co-housing uh, might or could be, and uh, there's fear associated with that, and that's part of the roadblocks. And I believe that all of us have a responsibility somehow to uh, work with uh, uh, that to uh, to educate, and of course the institutions uh, will do that. But I think. Uh, the kinds of uh, um, events, uh, one-off events uh, that have held, and a bit more networking uh, of those around the country will probably go a long way to uh, changing slowly over time uh, the way uh, people uh, saw that. Um, Just on that, Mike, I would just suggest that the 5th of March there'll be another session in Auckland. Ah, fantastic. Yeah. So do people get that? Yeah. yeah, now there are a lot of resources. Uh, Michael Payne has done a sheet on the settlement that we have here that uh, we want to make sure is available outside. So anybody who wants to teach, uh, take uh, a copy of that uh, would be uh, really great. And uh, it's a fantastic uh, one pager. So um, we have that here. <coughs> Um, oh, we, uh, we've, uh, we've made a terrible glitch. We have locked the gifts for you all <laughs> in my office. So, uh, uh, there you go. We weren't uh, as well uh, organised as we could be. I'll tell you what I'm going to do as a segue. I'm just going to quote from you all, right? Uh, there is uh, a quote here that... Um, housing is a human right, right? Now, um, something that came from uh, Marcel is that uh, uh, we, we all think that the problems are similar or, or the same, uh, but actually uh, sometimes things haven't worked and there's reasons for that and people just don't know they haven't worked yet or they don't know what works. So there is a real need for that connection and uh, sharing that uh, spider web. Uh, in the UK, for many years, they had a site called Collective Custom Build that did just that. It was a centrally government-funded, uh, quite a major uh, enterprise. And of course, when the government changed, it went too. But uh, uh, for a period of time, there was very, very good, comprehensive, detailed uh, resources readily available to whoever wanted it. And it also uh, acted as an exchange. Um, Camille said, building community by building buildings. I really liked that. Uh, so it, we're not just building one thing, we're um, uh, building uh, other things. So we mentioned uh, the cult uh, before. The land cost issues, really this, the, the things with, uh, that came out particularly, I think, from Michael Lafond. Uh, it's uh, affecting them there and it is the underlying problem here, not just for co-housing but for everybody. Uh, but uh, uh, so uh, there's a real role for education, it seems to me, of our political uh, um, sector. So as we educate uh, uh, the wider community, uh, that includes the politicians. And uh, they will recognise that really it is more affordable. It can be mixed tenure. Uh, the, these are, are kind of fundamental things that happen through Europe that uh, uh, help support co-housing get off the ground, actually very often by through the provision of land or the sponsoring of land, uh, which is then subsequently purchased or leased. Yeah, so um, that issue was there. What else uh, uh, 
uh, pops out. Uh, the angry neighbours, so uh, that theme comes back, doesn't it? Uh, you know, it's just the fear. Uh, there was also the idea of partnerships. Uh, getting the numbers right, that came out of Jessica Smith's uh, uh, presentation. And, uh, yeah, that was rather good. Cars left at the gate, we, uh, we heard that a few times. I think um, something I would really like to highlight that um, Jürgen had to say, uh, which was about the potentials of a collective uh, as a cooperative for purchasing. People weren't thinking so much that way, but uh, we have uh, a, a great history of cooperatives in this country. So uh, actually, there's this huge potential buying power if it can somehow be got together. So uh, that seemed uh, to me like a, a really amazing idea. And of course, the architecture, the easy bit, the people is the hard bit. So finishing with uh, Michael Payne there. So um, maybe Corinne, I might now ask you to make some uh, uh, some presentations to our, our speakers as a way of saying thanks and thank you for rushing around. Uh, yeah. Um, is Marcel, do you know if Marcel is still Is Marcel here, here please? Uh, can we have the speakers all come down? Maybe yeah, that's the best way. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah. Yeah. And Marcel has uh, uh, been a very gentle um, organiser of uh, the um, Maori trustee and the, those group and a number of groups of people. So um, please. So thank you, Marcel. Uh, it's Marcel there, not sorry, Marcel. It's you. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. So, so really, um, thank you for your um, indulgence. The Leecher Theatre is not quite as full as it was. So uh, maybe that means that the Havana Bar will not actually be over full as well. So we're now going to adjourn there. I believe um, the first, first drink is on us. That's right. Yeah. Yep. So, so um, once you get to Havana Bar, you exchange your name tag or plead with the volunteers if you don't have your name tag anymore, and they'll exchange it for a drink ticket that you take to the bar. Yeah. Yeah. And there'll, some, there'll be some food there as well. Yeah. yeah. So, thank you all. Thank you.